Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihee. We've got another exciting show for you this afternoon. I have as my special guest a very good friend and a colleague of mine. Uh, we have spent some time working on the community and trying to get make things better for Hawaii. I want everybody to uh, welcome the former mayor of the city and county of Honolulu, uh, Mufi Hanneman. All Thank right. you, Mufi. Well, thank you. And Mufi Mahalo. now is the uh, president of the Hawaii Lodging and, Tourism Association. Lodging and Tourism Association. And you were just explaining to me that that's a broadened name because the people you work with, well, tell, tell us about yeah. your job. Well, what, we what used to be called the Hawaii Hotel Association. Right. And then uh, I uh, asked the board to change the name to Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association to reflect that we're more than just hotels. Uh, and lodging properties. We, in fact, encompass uh, all of what is tourism, and that includes uh, retail businesses, transportation and, companies, and, and airlines. And these and businesses like. are all part of your membership? They're all membership. part of our membership. We are about 700 strong. We're the largest private sector visitor industry organization in the state. Well, you know, Mufi, you've always had a, not only an interest, but a talent uh, for working on things like travel and international affairs. Um, we, folks, we were just talking about the fact that way back in the day, uh, the mayor was a um, was my international director, and you did. In fact, you were, I think, the first international director the state of Hawaii ever had. It, it's a, there's a special statute creating a, a job. <laughs> <about And>, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, w you know, it was so exciting, Mufi, back then, because as, as you know, as we were discussing, you actually created a network of offshore states, starting from Jeju Island in Korea, Okinawa in Japan, Hawaii, which is offshore of the uh, continental U.S., we even went down to um, Thailand with Phuket and Malaysia and um, Taiwan and Hainan Island. So not only did this network uh, take one side of the, covered all political spectrums, and we combined that with the American territories uh, like Guam and Saipan and, and, and the rest of these places. And you actually had a summit. Tell us a little bit about those well, good old days. Well, Governor, I, I need to give credit where credit is due. You know, it was really your vision. Well, yeah, um, no, you did the work. <laughs> <laughs> I had the, you know, I had the dream. You had the dream, you had the <laughs> I woke vision. Up, I woke and, up one uh, morning and said, Mufi. <laughs> <laughs> I was very fortunate to, to work under you, uh, Governor, because uh, you had this vision, and it was my job to implement it. And that's exactly what we did. You were the first governor to kind of reach out. And you saw this as more than just, uh, missions to exchange macadamia nuts and right, gifts and right. so forth. No, yeah. You said, you know, I want substance, I want trade to come out of this, I want tourism, I want investment, and that's exactly what we did. We did a sister state summit where we brought in all our sister state relationships and we included the American flag areas that were part of the Pacific Basin and Development Council. Can you Council. imagine, in that sister state summit, we had, this is way back when, we had Taiwan sending delegations in mainland China, yes. uh, which in those days was unthinkable. In fact, we I remember you were telling me you had to do something with the logistics. They couldn't catch the same elevator exactly. or whatever, exactly. but they had a chance to meet and talk yeah. and, and do that. Well, you know, Governor, you were very, uh, you had a tremendous foresight. I, mean, I remember uh, we planned a trip uh, for you to go to Vietnam. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I remember when the idea was broached, <laughs> uh, you didn't even care that we didn't have uh, diplomatic relations with Vietnam at that point. You said someday they're going to they're gonna be part of, of the, this international community. Let's get in there. So we were the first state. And said, I said, well, you went. You went to Vietnam. <laughs> well, the last minute you couldn't go. And so you said, you go. I said, me? <laughs> and so I went on your behalf. And, and you know, it was just, Mufi, you know, this is more than just about uh, tourism. Well, uh, in my opinion, it's more than just economics. I, I mean, um, President Clinton was re just here, a yes, friend of yeah, yours. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and we were talking uh, about uh, why he was here. And he had come to address a, a travel association. And the point that he was making was that co tourism actually uh, lays the foundation for, uh, for peace. 
that people who visit other cultures, who spend time in other countries, who visit America, who visit Hawaii, actually uh, not only uh, spend money, which is important for our economy, but actually learn enough about each other that they, act, they contribute to peaceful relations. Absolutely. So you're in the, really in the business of, of the peace business. Well, you know, and, and, and it's marvelous because it also speaks to the fact that at the end of the day, uh, we're all part of this, this worldwide community. And if we can understand each other uh, by traveling to each other's places and so forth, you come away not only getting a better appreciation of that culture, but then when people say things about certain areas of the world uh, or have impressions based on what they see uh, over the media or anecdotally and the like yeah. or on social media, you're able to say, wait a second, I was there. It wasn't yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, or so-and-so came to visit us here, and I have a better understanding of it. So tourism is a wonderful, wonderful industry. Well, tell me what the difference is between the, uh, I guess, the traditional Hawaii Tourism Association and, and your organization. Okay. Or what, what, yeah. the, what do they serve? Our mission is basically uh, education, advocacy, and philanthropy. So w we try to promote everything that is good about tourism and try to make sure that whether it's with government or the private sector or the military or the communities, we're working collaboratively in partnership. And then we also have an objective to give back to the community. We do the most successful single-day fundraiser in the state really? called the Charity Walk. Oh, okay, yes. okay. And uh, where we raised this year a record uh, $2.26 million. This year alone? This year alone. Wow, good. And, congratulations. And what we do is good we give you. that back uh, to the nonprofit social service agencies who sometimes, you know, their hands are tied or they're not getting as much money from government because government can only fund so many agencies. We try to help fill that gap and fill that void. It's statewide. It's four charity walks in the four counties. Uh, and we do this each and every year. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that, and I, I don't know very many people do, but it's a, it's, I, I, you know, it's an important fact that people know that you, you are there not just to, uh, again, not just to do business, which, by the way, is important, yes. but to give back to our community as well. Right. And so where do most of the participants come from? Uh, are they, you bring in some people from offshore as well as local? For no, these it, it, it's all here. Uh, all our members are basically from the state of Hawaii. Uh, and we have some members who are based on the mainland. And then on the charity walk, it's all done on each and every island. The three weeks in May, uh, we do it. We start with Lanai, Molokai, uh, the big island, Maui, Kauai, and then we culminate here the third weekend in May uh, on Oahu. And mm -hmm. then we combine our dollars, uh, and then we funded over 350 nonprofit groups last year. This year, we anticipate to do more. And obviously, the $2.26 million is going to go a long way. Well, that's congratulations. That, that's really nice. Now, you not only, uh, you know, worked, helped me do my international affairs and, uh, and later on became director of uh, uh, DBED, which is what? Department of Economic Development and Tourism. Uh, but you became, you were the mayor of Honolulu, one of the great mayors <laughs> of the city and county of Honolulu. You had a chance to be, what was it like? to be in that seat as... Uh, well, you know, Governor, I, as again, I want to give credit where credit goes. I, I learned a lot from you when I was working for you. <laughs> and and uh, one of the things I tried to do is exactly how you did with your cabinet. Well, I always tell people one of my fondest memories of working with you is you appoint a person to the job and then you let them do their job. Yeah, well, and, that's that's important. Yeah. And, yeah. It, although Donald Trump doesn't know that, but <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe he will now. Go ahead. But but you know, I, I mean, I, I tell people uh, what's good about being mayor is that you're involved with grassroots issues. Yeah, that this is a different life. different kind of. Yeah, you you you're there. Uh, you know, and talking about people's parks, uh, their potholes, uh, public safety, law and order, um, the water that they drink. Uh, the sewer that flows through our system and the like, wastewater. All those things are issues that are near and dear. So a mayor, a council member, has to be very accessible uh, to the people. And also very hands-on. You know, I had recently, I had the uh, opportunity to learn more about city government, really. I thought I knew government. You, you know, were on the Charter and Commission. I was on the Charter <laughs> Commission. And then I, I realized, as I was on the commission, how hands-on that level of government really is. Uh, is. I mean, you're dealing with real problems every day, and 
you know, sometimes w with the state, you can get a little conceptual, you can set, you know, lofty goals. But when you're in the city, lofty goals don't mean much when somebody's uh, roads, the streets are flooded, right, or right. there are too many potholes. And, That's right. And you've got to go out there and make, make, uh, make priorities. Right. And so it, it was a wonderful job, uh, and certainly uh, one that also has uh, feel-good type of activities. Uh, I always said Frank Fossey, one of his biggest contributions uh, to Honolulu is Honolulu City Lights. Yes. Because every yeah. year yeah. there's a smile on everybody's face as they come together at City Hall and doing that whole Christmas season. And, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> some people used to say, now we know why you really wanted to be married. Why that? You wanted to light the Christmas tree and sing a Christmas song. <laughs> I said, you got it. <laughs> you know, it almost didn't last. I mean, there were people who didn't want to have the city lights going on. And I remember this. In fact, it, I think it was your department that got involved with it when we, we lit the Capitol and we right. had the state join in with the city. Exactly. And there were a lot of people saying, well, you know, but actually government, Pandi Yoko Oji told me this a long time ago. He said government needs to be more than just about solving the worst problems of humanity. It needs to also do things that make people happy, that, exactly. that expresses the best of I couldn't of who agree we are. with you more. And I think nothing makes me happier uh, than to see somebody smile and say, wow, what a difference this program is making. Uh, what a difference. Uh, uh, the city is doing in this area and so forth. And even now in this job with HLTA, they have a nonprofit group say, well, we were short of funding, and thanks to your charitable contribution. These children got help. These those, children those got help. Got or a student them. that got a scholarship from our association. Oh, that's fantastic. Trying to make ends meet, and we helped them uh, pursue a hospitality But career. every once in a while, you got to deal with the tough issues. Exactly. So, so one issue that you and I both dealt with for, for years, and you much more than me uh, over the years since then, uh, is the fi solving the transportation problem on this island. And um, as, you, as you know, you we when we were in office together, tried to get uh, start off the uh, mass transit system for city and county of Honolulu. And it was great days back then. The federal government was giving us 90% share of the money and, uh, and the rest of it, but it didn't happen. It took you to get this uh, mass transit system started. Um, and so here we are today. And what, what are some of the differences between what you, we faced when the state uh, and you and I were uh, looking at this problem and when you had to d deal with it as mayor? Well, I think lessons learned. I, I think uh, the fact that um, the last time when you were governor uh, and tried to get it through, you came very close. You, you had a great working relationship with then Mayor Fossey, who was also a strong transit proponent. But the last piece um, uh, was not part of the package, and that was the local funding aspect. So right. we had the federal government guaranteed almost up to 90 percent. That so this time around, I basically reversed the order. I said the local government's got to put up first. put up first because of what happened last time, uh, and then go and petition the federal government for help. And I thought the stars were aligned because we had a president at that time. Oh, it was it was all very much aligned. He was very much aware of our traffic problems here. Senator Inouye was a key fixture in, in the Senate. So my job was to try to make sure that the local aspect would come into place. And, and we're going to come right back to that because, um, as you know, the local aspect is where we now yeah, exactly. find ourselves having to deal with. So we're going to take a short break and then come back and hear from Mayor Hanneman about the challenges of building a mass transit system. Thank you. to see you with my dear. What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the starting line. Push. Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. 
I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Wahee and our special guest, Mayor Mufi Hanneman, who is now president of the, you know, I've got to remember that, Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association with over uh, 600, 700 members, yes. right? And so we are now discussing uh, the mass transit system and the challenges that you have. Now, Mufi, first of all, uh, I'm going to really get in there now. You created this system, okay, I, and, uh, as mayor. Yeah, it, without you, frankly, uh, and, and I mean this as a compliment because I'm a supporter of the, of, of the system, and I try to do it, and I couldn't get it done. It's one of the little disappointments when my book finally comes out if I ever write one, you know. But you did it. And so you created heart. You create. Tell us about what your what your thoughts were. Why, how did this all happen? Well, I, and I and I tell you what really got me going on this is I was sitting at Mayor uh, Governor Lingle's first State of the State address as a mayor. Right. And she said in the middle of her speech, uh, "I'm looking forward to working with the new mayor of Honolulu uh, to do a, a mass transit system." Both he and I have been longtime supporters. I popped out of my seat and I said, wait, wait, wait a second. Did I hear correctly what she just said? And I remember a couple years earlier, she tried to do it. Okay. In her first or second year in office, she was working with Senate President Bobby Bunda at the time. Yeah. Calvin C., I believe, was speaker. Uh, they were moving it along. Uh, and uh, she pulled back a lot of opposition from, from within her party. Uh, to raise the general excise tax. Uh, so this was that. to raise the half percent yes, excise yeah, tax. Yes, they, they, they needed a funding mechanism, so she pulled back. So when I heard that, I said, hmm, let me get this. Uh, maybe if I go down now and I do the heavy lifting, and as long as governor, she'll support it, you know, yeah, I, the can, end. I can she, show... As long as she catches the pass. Right, right, the bipa bipartisan support. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, and, you know, we were able to, and I know people don't like to hear about raising taxes, but we got the general excise tax increase in one legislative session. Yeah, it was fantastic. Because, yeah. you remember, we, uh, when I was in office, we, we passed the half percent. Right. And then it couldn't pass the council, but you actually worked it backwards. Didn't you pass it first? Yeah, I went to the state first, and then I came to the council. And then you came yeah. to, and, and but you put, uh, it passed. And, and, it, pa and, it passed both sides, and then <laughs> at the end, uh, Governor Lingo had some misgivings, and so she almost vetoed. So wow. I remember I was in Japan yeah. promoting tourism, yeah. and I had to come back because I got this message from my office. <laughs> It's, it looks like it may be vetoed this weekend, so I came oh, back, wow. convened uh, the leaders of the ledge, and said, you know, we've come so far, and I really believe the stars are aligned. We have a president in the White House that would be supportive, Senator Inouye is there. I had already talked to outgoing Secretary of Transportation, Norman Mineta, your right, good friend, right, 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 right. Uh, who almost threw me out of his office the first time <laughs> I went to see him in the waning days of the, the Bush administration. He said, wait, wait, you know, I sat on that money for Honolulu, the whole time, and then I got the news that the city council voted rejected. That money disappeared in nanoseconds. Yeah. So what that, makes you that think? That was my time. That was yeah. your time. What and makes you, and think? you had to go back to Washington and reconvince them. I had to reconvince them, yes. And so I thought that we had to do things differently, lessons learned, if you will. And that's why I reversed the process by having the state and the county come up for it. Uh, come up front first, and then ask the federal government. And, and what, what's the, uh, you, you also created the heart, the heart. And what, what was the purpose of heart as opposed to, you well, know, doing it, it as a normal CIP project? Well, I think because of the council, I uh, also had to weigh in on this. Everything that I did, uh, Governor, I made sure the council was a part of it. And they felt very strongly that we needed to remove it from the city. The city from does, the day by day. Day by day, day. There are other things that the Department of Transportation Services City uh, needs to focus on and concentrate. And this was such a big uh, new initiative uh, that based on what we had seen in other cities to some form of a heart authority uh, was in place. And I felt that the best way to do this was to have heart. Now, the way I understand it is that Oahu only got the ability to raise a half a percent excise. Well, Governor, at that time, 
the neighbor islands had the option to jump in and say they wanted the half percent also. Yeah, okay? but they didn't. They didn't because I, when I petitioned the legislature, uh, I lobbied for that too. That it shouldn't just be for Oahu. They should have the half percent, not to do rail, but to but do to whatever they whatever need. they wanted from a transportation point of view. And at that well, time, why, why, why didn't we take it why advantage of it? I, I mean, it I, seemed to I, me that one of the, if you don't mind uh, me saying this, one of the weaknesses of the present system is that we keep treating the half a percent as a uh, uh, as a tax specifically for uh, mass transit. What we should have in my opinion, we should do is put the half a percent on the table as something that counties, all counties, any county that wants to take advantage of it can, can use yeah. it. And, 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 and let just give them that option. Yes. Well, I, th I think what the, the state has done with the process was that the counties had to ask for it and had to push it and approve it. And I think that's where the breakdown came because it's the idea of raising a tax right. by half percent. But yeah, but we need to start treating our counties a little bit more like grown-ups, don't you think? Well, and, and, and I think, you know, maybe this is a time to revisit it as they're looking again at uh, making up the shortfall for, for which, rail. Which brings us to today. So right now they're looking at the sh making the, up the shortfall, which, which in terms of one of the proposals on the table is that um, you know, you, you make the uh, half a percent, you extend it. Yeah. And, uh, and, but it, in, or why don't we just make it permanent? I mean, seriously, I mean, everybody has been paying it for a number of years now. And, uh, I don't know, is that an option on the table? Well, it's all going to depend on what the House and the Senate come forward with. The last legislative session, we supported the Senate version. When I say we, it's Hawaii. Lodging and Tourism Association supported the version that came out and said, extend the general excise tax. Uh, we really believe that the TAT is not as good an option as the Which brings us to the, the transit question. accommodations tax, which is right. the hotel room tax. Yeah. So now, the, one of the options now before under discussion, and as I understand it, there, there seems very likely that w there'll be a special session this summer. So one of the options, in addition to continuing or extending the uh, half percent increase in the excise tax, is to uh, increase the transit accommodation tax. And uh, you, you folks obviously have an opinion about that. So I'm, I'm not going to guess what that opinion is. I guess I could, but well, why don't you tell us what your position yeah. well, is? Well, as I said, based on what we did last session, we, we prefer the general excise tax. You know, it's more reliable, it's more stable. Uh, it's something that was set aside for transit. The hotel room tax is really straight from its original purpose during your time in office. It was supposed to be for funding of the convention center, uh, funding of the convention center, assistance to the counties, right. and marketing. Right. right now, the biggest recipient of the transit accommodations tax is the general fund. Really? 52% of the $485 million that's collected in TAT goes to the general fund. And government can use it for whatever purpose that has no nexus or relationship to tourism. Fine, they're doing it that way. So that's why we got concerned when they talked about raising the TAT by another percent. Right. And, and using it for a purpose that we need to have a much clearer understanding of well, how why it's going to be. Why are you raising bet. the tax? Right. Instead of continuing to go along the path of the general excise tax, which we feel, uh, and I did as mayor at that time when I lobbied for it, uh, that, you know, tourism goes up and down mm. uh, in good years, and we've had six straight years of good years, you know. Right. The tourism uh, special fund is robust. But when we take a downturn, as we've seen in the past, it's not going to come in at the same amount. And this is our number one Well, industry. I can see where industry people might be afraid that when there is a downturn, the general fund portion of this doesn't get reduced. Exactly. But the promotional side and, and the side that now is going for, for tourism. Right. And, and well, th well, there are a couple other issues related to, to this that I, I want to touch on. And that's but first... Because, the, can I just say one thing, though? Yeah. However, if the will of the House and the Senate collectively is that we take a portion of the TAT, okay? And if the governor, Governor Ige, is for that, 
And if our congressional delegation say that, we don't want to stand in the way because we are pro-rail. At the well, end of the day... Uh, yeah, the rail is, you know, the rail would be a big boon to uh, tourism. Tourism and our workers right. who live out in Eva and Waipahu and Kalihi. Right. So if that is the case and we want to be part of the discussion, we want to be in the tent as opposed to outside the tent saying, okay, what's the nexus to tourism? How are we going to benefit? Are we sure we're going to go Ala Moana, uh, sorry, airport to Ala Moana and so well, forth? Well, if you did, that, that would be perfect. In yeah. fact, they, you know, even, even you and I know that the best result would be for the rail to end up in Waikiki and up at Manoa at the university. Absolutely. And then we'll have a real genuine right. system. Yeah. One of the differences, though, between the TAT and the increase in the excise tax is right now the neighbor island counties are not being tax really to support the rail but i'm assuming that if there is a uh, increase in the tat it'll be an increase across the whole state so the neighbor islanders might have to weigh in on well, this well this is where as i said if we're in the tent as visitor industry right we, we'd like to say that our preference is that the neighbor islanders not have to use that portion to pay for the rail system on oahu that they can use that to pay for transportation-related projects that can All benefit right. so the that's tourism. What, no, why not build it at grade? Everybody says the reason why this thing is so expensive is because we're going so high up in the air. It'll actually cost more to go at grade. We looked at it when I was right. mayor, which is why we went elevated. You know, you talk about going in at grade, Governor, you're going to be dealing with EV issues. Yes. Uh, it's also going to be a lot slower because you're competing with cars, with traffic signals and the like, as opposed to being at grade, I mean above grade where you can just kind of go through. In Phoenix alone, there were 52 traffic accidents in one year because wow. they're an at grade system. So you have that. Now let's talk about the cost. It could cost as much as $2.2 billion. And just will, to change that? Just to change everything and go at grade. So it's already expensive. So, already expensive. so to me, Rather than try to build a grade, why don't you take that 2.2 million and use that to extend to UH Manoa? Absolutely. Or extend absolutely. out into Kapolei. Uh, absolutely. You know, I got it. it, it so it there is, a, it's more expensive to go on. It's more expensive to grade. It's not going to be as efficient. We're going to have to build a base yard in town uh, also for that. And real, um, real quick, why is the state taking 10% of your, uh, the excise thing? This was something they foisted upon us back when I was mayor. Yeah. And they said they needed it for administrative purposes. Yeah, they take only 5% from the airports. You know. <laughs> right. So, um, I know that from my chance. <laughs> I, I can answer that question. And, and so they've never returned it, which I think is the first thing they should try to return so that it goes strictly uh, for rail and what it was suited for. And here's the other thing that we have uh, concern about is that anytime they've raised a special fund, say if they raise a TAT, uh, we want to make sure that when they say, okay, the real project is POW, then they have a tendency to put it into a general fund for something else. Yeah. We're saying if you're going to raise that tax, raise the GT, keep it permanent and let that be uh, part. Well, I, I think my opinion is we ought to permanentize the half percent for all counties and then let the counties be responsible for how they spend. I, I really want to thank you. I, I wish we had another we had more hour, time, yeah. <laughs> um, but I appreciate your coming and I appreciate your candor and I wish you the best. Uh, the, thank you, the, Governor. Uh, special Mahalo. session. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.